So community mental health and wellbeing fund has been announced for a fourth year, which is fantastic. A little bit of background to the fund. Um, the fund was introduced after COVID-19 for mental health recovery, specifically for adults only. There is a separate children's mental health and wellbeing, but we don't distribute that. That's seen by South Manage Retention. Um, to date, this fund has distributed 51 million around um, to community incentives supporting mental health and wellbeing across Scotland. And funding for a fourth year of 15 million was introduced in April 2024. The fund aims are very similar to the aims from the last um, three years. So the fund aims to tackle mental health inequalities, address issues of social isolation, loneliness, suicide prevention, provide small grassroots community groups and organisations um, to deliver such activities, and provide support, sorry, provide opportunities for people to connect with each other. So nothing in that sense has really changed from the last three years. The fund priorities, again, are very similar to tackling priority issues within transition and recovery, addressing health inequalities exacerbated by the pandemic, providing opportunities for people to connect with each other and build trusted relationships, responding to the cost of living crisis, and this is where there's a small change this year, so tackling child poverty through interventions which support adults. So always bear in mind that this fund can only go to people over the age of 16, but Scottish Government this year are looking for projects um, that are seen to be tackling child poverty through interventions supporting adults. Supporting small grassroots community groups and organisations to deliver such activities and all projects must have a community focus within South Lanarkshire only. So who can apply? You've got to be a VASLAN member. If you are not a member, would like to become a member, I would like to check if you are a member, get in touch with the office and we can arrange that for you or let you know if you are a member. You must be a Scottish Charitable Incorporated Organisation or unincorporated, a company limited by guarantee, a trust, not-for-profit or asset lock company, community interest company, a cooperative um, or community benefit society, community council or parent council. Now, with this fund being specifically for adults over the age of 16, parent councils can apply. However, the project has to be for anyone over the age of 16 and cannot be for young people. Parent councils almost also must have a constituted group and a bank account um, separate to the school's bank account. We cannot pay funds into a South Lanarkshire Council bank account. So it's got to be a, a separate bank account linked to the organisation or the um, parent council. Unconstituted groups can apply for funding. So they can apply for a micro, group, a micro grant of up to £2,000. They must be working in partnership with an established organisation that is constituted and willing to hold the funding on their behalf. So this could be a community council, it could be a faith organisation, it could be a larger constituted group um, or a constituted group that we do work with and that we know of. Um, and that is just to ensure that the money is being held by an organisation that has the kind of liabilities there to, to ensure the money will be spent properly. There must be written evidence to show an agreement in place between the two organisations to say that the larger organisation will hold the funding um, and what this will be spent on in line with their funding application for the Community Mental Health and Wellbeing Fund. If you are an unconstituted, an unconstituted group and you would like to become constituted, our capacity officers can help with that process um, and that would help you apply for more money if, um, if it was something that you were needing to do. So what will we fund? It's the same from the last three years. We'll fund equipment, one-off events. However, one-off events really need to show that there is a wellbeing and mental health focus. Um, hall hire for community spaces, staffing costs, training costs, transport, utility running costs, volunteer expenses and small capital spend. Staff costs this year are slightly different. Scottish Government have introduced a policy where any public spending, um, any staffing costs must, must meet the real living wage. If that is a problem within your application or for your organisation, get in touch. However, we do expect applications to reflect this. So you applied for a project last year for, say, £15,000 for a part-time worker. We would expect that to increase this year to reflect on that. Um, so we, are, you know, we have thought about this with regards to the staffing costs. 
What we won't fund, so again, this year we will not fund clinical mental health treatment such as clinical therapy or counselling. We are looking for non-holistic therapies um, or non-holistic treatments. Contingency costs, loans, endowments or interest, electricity gen generation and feed-in tariff payments, political or religious campaigning, profit-making or fundraising activities, that that you can reclaim statutory activities, overseas travel or alcohol. Continuation funding. So if you have applied to Community Mental Health Wellbeing Fund for any of the last three years or for all of the last three years and you were successful, you can apply again. You can also apply again for the same project. It doesn't have to change. We went back to Scottish Government. Um, the TSI went back to Scottish Government with an overarching kind of thought that if it's working, why are we consistently asking for it to be changed? So this year, Scottish Government have agreed that they're not going to be looking for the additionality. Now, the panel might ask if there's any additionality. However, what we're really looking for in your application form this year is a real life impact. So when you're completing your application form, ensure that there is a quote, a case study, not a full case study, but just something to highlight real life impact that your group has made, um, because that is more important than adding on, you know, this continual having to change what it is that you're doing. The fund must not be seen as a way of replacing other funding streams that specifically came down from Scottish Government. There is more around that and the guidance. Um, again, if that is an issue, please get in touch with us and we'll have a chat through it. Um, but that is just something that Scottish Government have, have added in this year, is that they don't want this fund to be seen as a way to replace other funding streams. So what's available? We have got 881, just over £1,000 to distribute. It is for adults only, age 16 plus, and it must be a community focus within South Lanarkshire only. Our amount has changed slightly this year. So we've got our micro grants up to 2,000, our small grants from 2,000 to 7,500, our main grants just over 7,500 to 20,000, and our partnership grants 20,000 to 40,000 pounds, and you will have 18 months to spend the fund. Now, the partnership grants were 50,000 in previous years. Um, however, what we've noticed is groups are applying, some groups were applying for £25,000 each and it wasn't partnership working. So when the reportings came back in, um, it's actually been quite unfair to other groups. So what we've done this year was reduce the grant to 40000 which means that you can still as a partnership apply for that extra money. Um, however, it's really promoting true partnership working and also making more money available for the smaller grants and the main grants. This year, we decided to hold focus groups um, for people who had been successful and people who had been unsuccessful. We have never come back to the sector and asked how we're doing as a grant maker. And this year, we felt quite important that there was a co-production um, with the fund. So we held focus groups and asked how we were doing. From that, we got quite a good amount of feedback and we have changed the process of how we run the fund. So this year, the fund will open on the 30th of September. It will stay open for six weeks only and shut on the 11th of November. What that will do will stop the continual change of deadlines um, and also mean that there is only going to be one panel. So between the 11th of November and January, the staff at Vaslan will be evaluating application forms, looking for more information if needed, coming back to groups that aren't suitable to apply, whether it's applying for young person grants or projects that don't meet the criteria of the fund. We will spend the time between November, realistically it will be December, November and December, doing that work, ensuring that the applications that go to panel are as strong as possible. All applications that are suitable and meet the criteria will go to panel, on the 9th and 10th of January, there will be one small panel and one large panel. This will prevent it being a first to the post, so first application and first group of applications at first panel. It makes the process fairer. And then all funds will be paid out through, throughout January and February. So as soon as you've been notified that you're successful, if you get your invoice back into us within seven days, your grant money will be with you within two weeks. This was based on the feedback that we've received from the sector to try and make the fund as fair as possible. There will be a locality split again this year, so each locality will have, on average, around £220,000 um, that will be distributed. We went back and checked the figures this year, and it was a really fair way to do it. There was a 
a percentage um, and it showed that there was a very similar kind of trend going through all four localities and there'll be about £60,000 for South Lanarkshire wide projects. Um, so that is the way that we are looking to distribute the fund this year and that is the process. So the important dates for yourself are 30th of September for opening, 11th of November for closing and then we will be in touch between November and December with the panel meeting the second week in January. Support that will be available. Oh, jumps ahead. So there will be documents available to download on the Community Mental Health and Wellbeing Fund website. Um, that will be general information to do with the fund. We have written a guidance on how to write a strong application. Now that is not only Community Mental Health and Wellbeing Fund specific, that could be used for any application that you're completing. We will have frequently asked questions after today's session. So we'll gather them from today and from the session that we held on Monday and the fund guidance. Other capacity support is, sorry, other support could be capacity support. So that would be someone within the locality teams at Vastland coming out and meeting with you to support you completing your application or give you further information. There will be drop-in sessions um, in each locality that are already up and running. And I will be there um, to discuss the fund and one-to-one -one support. So if you need anything at all, just get in touch with Vastland and someone from Vastland will be able to support you with your application. The top tips, read the guidance before submitting an application. I cannot stress this any further. Um, it's actually a requirement on the application form that you've read the guidance. However, please actually read the guidance. They've been written in a way that it's not overly um, word heavy. And within the guidance, it will give you all the information that you need to ensure that your project meets the fund criteria. Provide as much information as possible in the first instance. Some common things that we always have to come back and ask for are if it's salary costs, um, what's the hourly rate, and have you considered um, or have you incorporated national insurance and pension into that where appropriate. Panel will always ask us if the information is not being provided, and it means that we don't have to then come back and delay your application if it's already, already there. Provide additional information in a timely manner. So if we get in touch with you between November and December and ask for further information, please get this back to us as soon as you possibly can and contact us if you're unsure about anything. How to apply, so it will be the same application process this year and it will be on our website, um, the Vastland website, to access the application form, which I'm going to show you. If you're new to the funding process or never done this before, or you need support with an application, please contact a member at Vastland because we'll come out and, and sit with you. We cannot complete your application for you, but we can support you through it. So before we move on to the q and I'm just going to show the website. So this will be the website. Um, it will be www.vastland.org.uk and then there will be a link to then move on to the Community Mental Health and Wellbeing Fund page or to go directly to it, it is www.vastland.org.uk forward slash cmhwf forward slash and that will bring you directly to the Community Mental Health and Wellbeing Fund page. This is where your link will be to apply. Contact details if you need any further support. And then down here is where there'll be further information and the links to the guidance documents um, will all be held here. So if there's anything you need at all before getting in touch, jump onto the website um, or give us a phone and we can help, we can, we can talk you through it. The application form, which is still completed, which is great. So I've completed one just to kind of talk us through it. So this is the first page of the application form. The question, first question being asked is, have you read, read the guidance notes? Anything with a red asterisk is compulsory. You must complete that. So it's organisational details, a brief summary of your organisation's main activities. So that's not linked to the application. Previously, we've had groups apply and they've maybe been historically youth groups. And then there's a question at panel, why are they suddenly moving into adult spaces? Or, you know, is this really what they're going to spend money on? Um, these are questions that come up at panel that we can't control. And at the focus group, one of the suggestions was, can we have a brief summary of the organisation? Because it means if you've moved from youth work into adult learning or adult work or community development work, you can put it in here and it just makes it clear if that question does come up at panel. Income from financial year. Application contact details, the type of service that you carry out, now that is a drop down list. Um, so when you click there, it's got loads from you to tick from. Please tick, you can only tick one. Um, 
And then a hundred word summary of your project. The reason that we need this, the Scottish Government asked us for a one hundred word summary of all applications. And in year one, we didn't ask for this, so we then had to spend time going through everybody's applications and picking out a hundred words to give to the Scottish Government. So this just makes that process for us slightly easier. And then the full details of your project that you're proposing to do. And this is where you will fill out the bulk of your, your application um, for the actual project. The reason for the application is it a new service, improving a service or maintaining a service. An estimated start date doesn't have to be exact. If you don't know when it is, just put it roughly to when you think you'd be able to start. Is the project match funded? If it is match funded, we need the details of the match funding. So who is where's the match funding coming from? Is it fundraising? Is it reserved? Is it um, centralised funding? Is it another fund that you've applied for? It won't change the outcome of your application. We, If it's match funded by the lottery, that's absolutely fine. We just need to know where that money's coming from. Is that a partnership application? If so, who is the partnership? Um, so what's the organisation that you've linked up with? Oh, sorry, I've got a height test and it just started moving. Um, and then any additional information. Your costing will all calculate automatically into this box here. So just input your staff cost, accommodation cost, anything that you've got in here, and it will automatically calculate for you there the total. A bit of advice for this one, if you're putting on miscellaneous costs and they are seen to be high compared to the total amount that you're asking for, panel will come back if you haven't told us what it's for. Now, we know miscellaneous is miscellaneous and we can't give us a rundown of what it's for, but just in brief, is it a 7% management fee? Is it... Um, for utilities that haven't been listed above, you know, just try and give us a rough idea of what it's for. It, again, it saves us having to come back um, and delay any applications. This year, Scottish Government are reporting on volunteers, so they are asking how many volunteers are involved in your project. Again, it's not compulsory that you have volunteers. However, if you do have volunteers that are going to be linked to this pro project, please put a number in there of how many you think it will be. The following page is really the tick box page of um, the criteria. So you're ticking at least one of these interventions or priorities. You can tick more than one, but please ensure that you're not ticking them just for the, the sake of it. Try and ensure that you're ticking the ones that are really linked to what your project's for. If you tick them all, we would expect to see that within your reporting that you've actually covered all of them. Um, so just be mindful when you're doing that. It is okay to tick one. It, again, it's not a a negative if it is only one that you're really focusing on. Number of beneficiaries, how many people do you estimate are going to be supported through your project? And then the at risk list, um, who will benefit? And this year, Scottish Government have added on people with neuro neurological conditions or learning disabilities, um, which wasn't there in the last three years. So again, it just opens the fund up a wee bit wider to a, a, a larger demographic of people. And then what locality are you going to be running your project from? So this is not the locality where your office is based, it's where are you running your project from? And then the outcomes, what your outcome is going to be short term and medium term. Again, tick them all if they apply. Please do not tick them all if they don't apply. We would be expecting to see it within your reporting that you're actually meeting um, these outcomes. What evidence are you going to collect to demonstrate your benefits? So that could be surveys or case studies or feedback from participants, um, you know, quotes and things. So that is just giving us an idea of what you're going to collect to demonstrate how you're meeting the outcomes outlined above. And then an exit strategy. This is more important for larger applications. So if you're applying for a larger sum of money, we would expect to see an exit strategy. So what is the plan after 18 months? Are you going to apply for more funding? As the project going to end, um, just be honest in there about what you feel your exit strategy is going to be for after the the application. Sorry, after the money's finished. And then finally, it's just the consent. Um, you are agreeing to be a member. You're agreeing that information will be shared, and then you're submitting the application. The application will come straight into our EPI system, um, and as soon as it comes in, we will start the process of evaluating it and getting in touch with you to ensure that all information is there. And if we feel there's any other information missing, or if we know of other work that you're doing that would be beneficial to you, and it will we'll get in touch and, and provide that support. 
um, we will never change an application for anyone without speaking to you first. So that is the presentation, the application form and the website. One of the questions that came up yesterday was, can the money be spent in less than 18 months? Yes, it can. So it doesn't have to be 18 months. It can be spent in six months. Um, and yeah, it can be spent, you know, any time it's just got to be spent within that 18 month period. Peter has just put in chat that applications can be saved as well and you can go back to them at a later date. Um, there will also be a document available on the website, which will be a paper. It's not a paper version of the application. It's basically all the application questions and how to complete them. But if you want to download that, you could probably work off it on a Word document first and then copy and paste things over. Um, but we are always here if there's any issues, you can get in touch with us. So I'm going to open up to questions now. I think if people, there should be a, a raise your hand function or if you pop in the chat that you're wanting to, to speak. Um, and then we'll just kind of take it from there. So has anyone got any questions at this stage? Sorry, I missed the very beginning of the presentation. I got a phone call coming through, but I, I don't know if you covered this, but apologies if you have. Um, we already have, I'm from Pamis, and we already have a um, project going funded by the Wellbeing Fund. Um, are we, am I right to make an application while I've got another yeah. project running? That's absolutely fine. This is a new fund, so you are entitled. If you, we understand that there's projects that will still be running from last year's funding, it's absolutely fine to apply again, and you can apply for the same project. Um, we just look for real life impact. So, what difference is your is your current project making to people? Um, and if there's any further information we would need when your application comes through, we'll come back to you. But really what the panel are looking to see this year is that real life impact rather than additionality. So we're not asking right. you to reinvent a wheel or come up with something new. Yeah. It's just what difference is it really making to those people? Um, so if you can highlight that in your application, then that would be beneficial. That's brilliant because I know that other years we have had to change things. And we are guys, it's people with profound and multiple learning disability, complex healthcare needs. So changes can... A year isn't a long time for things to impact that group. You know, it's repetition. And um, so being able to extend the work is actually brilliant. It's great that you don't actually have to change it again to make the application. So that's brilliant. That really suits us. Thank you very much. No problem. Any other questions? I'm just going to check the chat and see what we've got in there. Oh, Carol. Hi, yeah. I think maybe you might have answered it. It's Carol Gemmel from Finding Your Feet. Um, you might have answered it actually just with that last response was about, I really love the fact you were talking about continuity funding and we don't have to demonstrate a different project. We can talk about going in for more funding. And it was just to ask you to talk a bit more about that, about what, sort of evidence you'd like to see what what would be the best evidence to provide about the benefit that would so why we'd want to continue yeah um so for me receiving an application form through what i would really like to see if it's a project that's been up and running is um you could potentially ask a participant one or two questions and that could be what difference has this project made to your life and what would you do if it wasn't here and the 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 whatever you get back from that, a couple of lines of that on your application. So maybe picking the most powerful quotes from it, or if there's enough space, if you don't mind, you know, typing it all out, you could put the whole section in um, of what they've said. But for me, that would demonstrate, you know, this group's been running for three years and we've funded it three times. However, this person's saying that it saved their life or, you know, that it's reducing the amount of times they're going to their GP. It's taking that pressure off statutory services. But we already know the sector does. And we already know this, but when it goes to panel, it's not us who are assessing it. So it's shown the people on panel that this group um, is really demonstrating the, you know, really demonstrating that it is life saving or life changing for its participants. So that would be the the kind of information I'd be looking for. I am currently putting together an impact report where I have interviewed some participants of groups funded by Community Mental Health Wellbeing Fund and. You know, the information that I've got back from that has been absolutely outstanding. So that kind of thing in the application would be brilliant. I'm 
Okay. Is there any other questions? We're doing good for time here, mate, actually. Still use all some time back. If anyone has questions that they want to ask and don't feel comfortable asking on the call, then you can email myself. Um, all my details are on the website. Um, but Carol, if you want to come in. I, I don't actually have a question as such. I just wanted to say that um, everything you've said sounds really straightforward and um, and thank you. Um, and it, I, I'm really relieved, as I think somebody says earlier, that we don't have to reinvent the wheel um, because um, I've just kind of run out of money on the the pro an area of the project that I'm doing. So it's good to know that we can just continue. So I don't have a question as such, just to say that it was straightforward. Exactly. No problem. We try and keep the funding as straightforward as possible um, where we can. And luckily enough, the Scottish Government allow us to make this um, fund very straightforward. They don't, they don't hit us with a lot of report requirements. Um, well, that was the final thing I wanted to, to to show you is this year we have been very fortunate that the Scottish Government have already given us the reporting requirements for you guys. So anyone applying for the fund and successful, we already have what we will be asking you to report on. This is in the guidance. So when the guidance is uploaded onto our website, which will be in the next two weeks, um, you will be able to see that. But I'm just going to share with you now the, the information that they're asking us now. There might be additional information added on top of this. I don't expect there to be. However, Scottish Government may decide that there is additional information. So at present, and this is what we are being asked to ask you guys in your evaluation. So it is what you were expected to do and what you actually did. So that is any activities that were undertaken match against the application form. So is it similar? Is it saying, you know, is it what you expected? Um, please let us know of any achievements to date that you are particularly proud of and demonstrate the difference made to individuals' mental health and well-being. So this is kind of going back to that impact that I was talking about, that real life impact. Um, that could be through a case study or it could be through um, quotes or videos or photos. If you need support with that, let us know because we will be able to help. Um, and please tell us how you achieved your proposed outcomes and then any challenges or changes that were made to the application. Now, what I will say is if you apply for money and you find a couple of months down the line it's not working, that's absolutely fine. Please get in touch with us because if you have another idea or we can work with you to create another idea, that still help, still ticks the boxes of mental health wellbeing, the priorities and the outcomes of this fund. And we're not instantly going to ask you for that money back. We will then allow you, you won't need to reapply, we'll then allow you to adapt um, to spend that money in another way that's still going to meet the outcomes of the fund. The last thing we want to do is to be calling money back from people. Um, so if we can help you in any way in that sense, we will. But we just needed to be honest with you because we don't want it to get to 18 months and you guys are reporting and it turns out that the project didn't work when we could have had time before to try and help fix it. So just let us know. Um, there will be a condition in the grant this year that you are allowing you are allowing us to come out and do spot checks. We might come out and join a group one day. We wouldn't do this if it's very vulnerable people that you're working with. We would get in touch first. Um, but we might come out and do one of your art, if it's an art class or a walking group, we'll come and join in. And again, that's just letting us see the real difference that you are making to the sector and allowing us to go back and fight for fairer funding um, with Scottish Government, South Lanarkshire Council and National Government. It gives us that evidence to be able to say, no, we've seen it firsthand, what they're doing. Um, so that's the kind of evaluation impact questions that were being asked. It's really good you've got this this year. Let's just start planning your evaluation documents um, to get back into us. And again, it's something that you have asked us to get as, as soon as possible. So the fact it's out before the funds is really good. It will be in our guidance documents for everyone to have a read through. Um, and you can maybe link it to when you are doing your application. Okay. Well, I am happy to end the meeting. If anyone has anything at all that they would like to speak to me about, or if you'd just like me to come out and see your organisation and have a chat with you. Um, that's not a problem at all.
Peter's put lots of information in the chat, my contact details, the website, um, which will be updated in the next two weeks with the guidance and the application form will go live on the 30th. That will not be up before then, but all the documents will be so that you can start planning your application.